Hi, I'm Aaron Gallagher. I do software engineering at YouTube. Uh, hopefully, my slides will come up here. Well, that's that's better. <laughs> Yay! Okay. So CFFI, it is the only right way to touch C from Python. Um, there's a little dagger there because it's this is kind of a mistruth because we're only talking about C. Uh, so everything else is worse. Um, it's it's not exactly a ringing endorsement, but CFFI is really the best thing out there. So it's it's kind of a shame that CFFI is kind of a late to the game, as it were, but it really does work um, astoundingly well. So let's talk about why these are bad. So, uh, oh, there it goes. OK, so CF, the CPython C API, ref counting, I, I really don't need to say more than that. So for those who have not had to deal with this already, C, the CPython C API is basically just Here's a pi object pointer, and if you use it, you need to incref, and when you're done with it, you have to decref. And you have to remember this. Um, forgetting to do so in either direction will either make your objects never freed, or you just crash sometimes, maybe. Um, so I mean, this is this is kind of bad enough on its own, but there's more. If there it goes, boilerplate. You have to copy paste structs with dozens of items like this. This really. Uh, there we go, implementation details too. I mean, really, that is what C C Python C API is. You have the internals of C Python. It's just a Python implementation. And they're like, well, people need to write extensions, so let's just show them what we have. Um, so all the stuff that you do is just kind of touching the inside of structs. Uh, I'll ha I have some snippets of that later you'll, you'll get to see. But um, I mean, the thing is, why does this matter? Implementation details uh, that I'll also cover in just a sec. But so, what is bad about C types? It only targets the ABI. So, <laughs> API versus API, the API versus ABI is kind of a, uh, when you have uh, things like your defines and your enums and all this. This is something that you have to care about when you're binding to a C library because not all of this stuff is exposed in the <clears throat> sorry in the library itself and so you require a C compiler to do that which is terrible but you have to like otherwise you um, I mean there's some things that'll kind of mitigate this but you end up having to like it just codes it once it doesn't actually look at the .h file that is relevant at the time it's just always forever until you run the tool again, those values. Uh, it's very tedious. You also have to copy paste a bunch of stuff in from the, uh, to, to set the arg types, the return values, all of this stuff, and deal open. You basically have to re-implement a lot of what your dynamic linker already does, like look for uh, you know, your, your libraries on the system. Um, like half of the C, uh, C types projects I've seen out there also fail to work on the Mac OS because they don't know that on the Mac OS your shared objects are called dot uh, dilib instead of dot so. So, Cython. Cython is great, but not for binding to C. Um, so, this is what that little dagger was about. So, when we're talking about C, that's a whole other thing. C, uh, CFFI is not actually great for. C++ at the moment, and um, Cython does handle it pretty well, but Cliff, Cliff is really new. It's great. You should use it, um, but you might not be able to because it's so new, but there's a, there's a link. It's like Swig, but it doesn't suck. Um, it's, it's written by people who realized that there are things that could be improved about Swig. Um, so that's about C++. And right, so this is all about C. I mean, there's, of course, the option to, if you're trying to bind to C++ code, then you can expose a C ABI because you have to deal with the fact that C++ and C code don't expose symbols the same way. Um, but so after all that, you know, how, how could CFFI actually be good? There's so many problems that you can have with everything. Well. So first, what is CFFI? So basically, CFFI is you have 
you 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 describe to CFFI what is it that I have on the C side and what is it that I have on the Python side, and it basically does everything else. There, I mean, you you need a bit of stuff in your setup.py file. It'll generate a shared object and you can import it. And then, I mean, you can call directly from Python into C and also from C into Python. It's great. Um, I mean, there's the case of, you know, I, I want to write, like, I have Python code and I want to make it fast. But, I mean, that's what PyPy is for. You don't need to write C for that. So, <clears throat> here's an example of the kind of thing I mean. So, you have your CDEF. It's like, okay, that is basically just C syntax. It's a little trickier than that. It's a uh, domain-specific language that is mostly C, but not quite. Um, but so you define the things that you want to call, and that's in your, you know, the, the thing that CFFI reads to generate your thing. And then in Python, you just import the thing, and then you can call it, and that's it. So you do have to do a bit of second order wrapping around unsafe bits where you know, you, you're mung munching pointers around. You have to have all of your CFFI code. Um, I mean, you, you have your CFFI exposed bits, and then you have to call, like you have to build wrappers around them uh, so that it's safe. But this is logic that you can do in Python. You don't have to write C for it. So you end up not having to do super complicated things in C. It's all just Python logic. So, but the thing is that CFFI also makes it really easy to call from C into Python. So they have this special thing, extern Python, that you can put on functions in your CDEF. And then in your Python code, then your FFI object will have a uh, def extern. So you just you put in the same name, and then you can just write in Python code, and then C code can call it just, I, I hope this is all readable, <laughs> uh, but you can call it just like any other C function. Yes, that, uh, I, I copy pasted that from the docs. I did not write that. So uh, yes, it's Python 2, but it, I mean, CFFI actually works really well across Python 2 and 3. Like, uh, it does things just right in terms of bytes versus text and so on. But so one of the really important things about CFFI is it abstracts out Python. Because I mean, this is really the problem with everything else. Uh, I mean, especially uh, the C Python C API is Python is very much part of everything you do at the like when you're actually writing your C code. So here's an example. <laughs> This is a bug that I found. It was crashing PyPy. So MX state time is uh, kind of an old thing. I don't think anyone really knows about anymore or has to care about. But so this is this is something that they had in their CPython C extension. So this is their MX date time free function. Uh, I mean, most of this isn't relevant entirely. I, I cut down to just this little bit, but basically, you have your pi object pointer that's passed in when you know your your object is done, and it treats it as a double pointer, and then jams some stuff into it. But see the important thing here. <laughs> if you know C, so basically this is the MX date time thing. That thing at the top that's supposed to be opaque. That is supposed to be implementation details, but they're just like all right. We're gonna jam some stuff onto it. This crashes PyPy, and yeah, that was that was fun to debug. Um, but so it worked on C Python most of the time. If you didn't compile with PyDebug, um, and they had a nif def around this, but they didn't check for PyPy, so it crashed. Yeah. But so as I kind of alluded to before, one of the important things about CFFI is it uses a C compiler. So it doesn't have to; it can. Um, but the thing that you get out of this is that you have um, the ability to get things out of your C headers, like defines, enums, all these things that uh, <laughs> another fun trick a lot of people will do is they'll make a function that looks like a function, but it's actually just a macro. Uh, C Python does this a lot, actually. Uh, but so something like C types, you just straight up can't call that. It doesn't, 
exist at, at the ABI level, which is all that C types can call. Um, CFFI does have an ABI mode, so it can work like C types, but in general, it's not necessary. It you can use it like in some cases, it's um, more convenient for like prototyping because it means that you don't have to rerun your C compiler every time. But in general, it's you, I mean, you get the correctness out of this as well. The C compiler gets to check your work. So if your types don't line up, if your C defs are not don't have the right types, then the C compiler will complain most of the time. But you can embed CFFI. And I'm going to, oh, I, I don't know if Moshe is watching, but you, you can embed it. But it's good. I, I, I am specifically going to say why. Yes. No, I, I'm going to tell you right now. So, <laughs> so the thing about CFFI that's different from the, the reasons why embedding is bad in CPython. Um, so here's some more stuff. Here's CPython. CPython has a lot of functions. It has way too many functions. This isn't even all the functions that you might need for embedding. Um, whereas for CFFI, that, that's it. I lied. That's it. Uh, you, don't, you don't even always need this. So the difference is that CFFI makes all of this stuff transparent. You like it still completely abstracts Python out of it. So anytime you call one of your extern Python functions or extern C functions, you know everything will have been set up uh, like in advance. Like you don't actually have to have thought about it at all. But see, the important thing here is that there is not really a distinction between the embedding and extending that there is like in CPython. You can have your um, you can have your code, your initialization of your program in C or in Python. Like you can have your Python test runner call into your CFFI, uh, like through your CFFI bindings into your C code. Um, one of the use cases that uh, Moshe has talked about before is um, like, what if I am trying to unit test GIMP, and you know because it has Python stuff, so. You can have your PyTest binary or whatever. It can call into GIMP, call all the initialization, and then just call the Python stuff like normal, as long as it's exposed in such a way that you know you can set up your state, you can call your, your Python things as necessary. It doesn't actually matter who starts the program, because everything is in the same shape either way. So yes, I mean, embedding isn't second class. Like it's, It is effectively treated the same as extending. Um, you might have to do this, like you you do have to do the same work in both places. Um, I mean, but you it is possible to do this. The the thing that's great about CFFI is that because it lacks all the boilerplate and so on, you can make it, I mean it's a lot easier to actually expose all this stuff in both directions in the first place. You don't have to care quite as much about like, you know, well you know, this is, this is so difficult, why am I having to do all this work just to call one, like, an additional function? Um, let's see. And CFFI is built in, if you're using PyPy. But you should be anyway. Uh, <laughs> but even if you're not using PyPy, there's a lot of stuff out there already using CFFI. Uh, cryptography, Pinacle, um, there's a lot, of the, a lot of the things, especially in the, the sphere surrounding the cryptography project that use CFFI because, I mean, it's, it's the right choice, like I said before. But no, it's, it's very likely that CFFI is already present on your system if you're writing a, a library or application or whatnot, and you're like, well, I don't want another dependency. You probably don't have to worry about it. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's about everything. I, I, don't, I don't know. I lost my timer, so I don't know if we have time for questions or. Okay. Uh, I'll start out the questions. Oh, I'll come bring you a mic there, Vicky. But uh, for the first question, uh, so is Cliff written by people who like work with TensorFlow and they were using Swig and they thought better of it, or I don't actually know if it has any connection to TensorFlow. I don't think so, but I, I mean, don't hold me to it. Sure. And and does Google slash YouTube use CFFI? Uh, CFFI or Cliff? Or uh, CFFI. 
I I mean, to an extent, like it's, I mean, there's third party stuff using it. It's not used as much as Cliff. Oh, okay. But yeah. I mean, Swig, it's all Swig. Sure, sure. <laughs> Question? So I'm assuming that this is an open source project with a robust community. Oh yeah, no, this is this has the backing of the PyPy team. Like this, this is all done by the PyPy people because they needed something for uh, C extensions that wasn't just CPyX. Um, so it it works really well, and I, I mean, so that's it's. Um, Actively developed, like they have added so many features. Like there's a lot of um, like the extra in Python thing is actually pretty new. Um, but yeah, I mean it's in active development. They add things like as they need it for PyPy. They're very responsive. So, uh, so I'm just curious. I think you you said early on that uh, one of the advantages it has over C types is that you don't have to do. So I've used C types, and you had to like encode in every input argument and decode the output and everything. So how is that handled in C CFFI? You're talking about text versus bytes? Or actually no, no, just like, you know, convert every uh, Python object to a C type. Okay, so uh, I mean CFFI, I, I mean I it's been a while since I use C types, but I thought that it generally worked the same way in that you have like your integer types are just a Python integer and so on. It has encapsulation around pointer types. Um, so I mean, like, when you get a pointer type out, it's wrapped in a thing. It's not just an integer. And when you pass the pointer type back in, I mean, you need it in that same shape. It doesn't just take an integer. Um, but I mean, for things like strings, like it'll take a byte string as you know, a car star and so on. Um, I don't know if that entirely answered your question, but so you can just pass. A lot of basic Python types straight yeah, in and out. Yeah, I mean the, you know, there's only like three different types in C. There's uh, you know, ordinal integer type, which is just passed straight through. I mean, floats too. Um, there's pointers, which are kind of encapsulated. I guess you, I think that it structs work the same way that it's all going to be wrapped up in a in a thing. I don't think I've ever returned a struct from a function in CFFI. I don't know. I, I'd assume it works, but. <laughs> Um, have you looked at uh, Boost Python or PyBind 11 for this type of stuff? Uh, Boost Python, yes. I mean, it's effectively going to be the same set of problems as Cython, where you're just targeting C, like the CPython C API. So, I mean, you lose all the, the PyPy support. Um, it is a little bit better because it can use the C++ native stuff for the incrafts and decrafts and so on. Generally, I think it's been a while since I looked at it. I know that uh, there's also a Rust thing that does something in approximately the same shape, where it tries to use the deterministic destructors for the, the proper reference count handling. Um, I mean, really, yeah, all of this stuff is like you, you can get better than just writing straight up C, but in the end, you're just targeting C Python. And um, actually, that was one thing that I forgot to mention. So. There's actually a post on Python Dev as of like a week or so ago where they're like, maybe we should reconsider some parts of the C API because they actually want to have a better garbage collector and all of this ref counting stuff gets in the way of that. And so factoring Python out, I think, is generally a good idea. Um, I mean, uh, sorry, factoring out like the, the specific implementation. I mean, I am fully in favor of the way that CFFI does it where it factors Python out entirely. but um, yeah, I I guess from a philosophical standpoint, I don't like those kinds of things. <laughs> and I haven't used uh, Boost Python in a while, but I haven't looked at... Uh, so, Py, uh, C yeah, Py yeah, Py uh, yeah. It's basically Boost Python, but without the boost. OK. So, so, <laughs> so, right. so the, great, the great debate rages on uh, between <laughs> Tesla and then YouTube and all the others, I'm sure. So it, it'll, it'll make good, good discussion uh, for afterwards. Um, any real quick last questions? OK. Well, in that case, another round of applause, please, for Aaron. Thanks.